So we're going to get started in just a moment with Diana Rahm, our Regional Sales Manager with Windstar Cruises. I see some people coming on the line now. Great. Um, I want to welcome everybody, all of our attendees. Um, thank you very much. I see some past clients on the line. Uh, if you are new to us, my name is Michael Graham with MGA Travel here in Myrtle Beach. And we are graced with the presence of Ms. Diana Rahm, the Regional Sales Manager with Windstar Cruises. Um, I was just on Windstar last fall. We were on uh, the, it's called the Windstar, which I think is the smallest ship in the fleet. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, 140, yes. Uh, it was lovely. We had a wonderful time. We went to Ephesus uh, where we had uh, the special dinner provided by Windstar at the Library of Ephesus after they closed in the evening. And um, then of course the Greek Isles were spectacular. But we loved, um, the ship's captain, uh, she was fantastic, and the ship's crew and everything about Windstar, I'm a fan. So, um, Diana, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Windstar? Well, I appreciate the opportunity, thank you. So, one of the things about Windstar is we are small ship cruising. And I think coming into travel in 2021, that's gonna be very important, um, just because of the size of our ships. Our largest ship is 342 passengers, and truthfully, we've been talking about social distancing forever because that's really what Windstar is about. It's about having a small ship experience, having plenty of space, and going to remote destinations. So today I'm gonna to share a little bit about our brand and where we go and what we do, just to kind of show you how we are different. So with Windstar, we really, it's all about taking travelers in a different direction. And we go to these captivating places in these strange and beautiful lands, but one of the things that makes Windstar special is we are small, so we're able to get into some of these smaller ports and these faraway destinations that big ships simply can't get onto. We really are able to go beyond the reach of other ships. I'm going to show you a quick video here. Um, I'm hoping that the sound and everything works, but it really gives you an idea of how we are and, and how we sing. I'm Neil Broomhall, I'm the captain of Fire Legends. All of my life, we have six ships, three of them are sail, three of them are motor. Once you're on board, you're going to have the same Windstar experience no matter which ship you're on. The Windstar experience is this fabulous little close community and environment where people not only enjoy their holiday, but there's a huge amount of social interaction between everybody. The significant thing with Windstar is that we get to some of the, the smaller out of the way places and those smaller out of the way places can be somewhere that's difficult to get to. The nice thing with a shallow draft vessel like this is we can take her along many of the longer rivers and canals to get her to some of those places that the big ships obviously cannot access. All of the ships feature a water sports platform. We visit some fabulous little bays and we put the anchor down, we put the water sports platform down. We have an open bridge policy, which means the passengers will come and visit me on the bridge. They will ask me all sorts of questions about where we are, what's on the chart, how does the radar work. All of these questions we're more than happy to answer. It's a very rare thing these days to be able to have access to the bridge. Windstar are quite unusual in permitting that. Here on board, of course, we're delighted that we can do it. It's a great pleasure to be able to welcome the guests onto the bridge. We have a very close relationship with our passengers. We get to know their names, we get to know what their favorite drinks are, the waiters get to know what their requirements are in the restaurant and so on. And so we are noted for having perhaps the friendliest cruise at sea. I have to say that it is the best experience that I've had at sea. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I hope that I'm able to pass that joy onto the passengers because it really is a wonderful experience here on Winston. That video is actually by Captain Neil. And one thing that you'll find on a Windstar sailing is our captains are very involved with our guests. So you will have, be having breakfast, lunch, and dinner with them. They go on shore excursions. It's not somebody that just waves to you at the end of your sailing, thanking you for coming. It really is somebody who is immersing himself with our guests throughout their voyage. So this is one of my favorite things I love to say about Windstar. We're the cruise line for travelers and not for tourists. And what, how I read that and what that means to me is with Windstar, it's really about the exotic destinations that we can take you to and the actual 
cultures that we can immerse you in because it, we're not going to ports that were designed for cruise ships and cruisers where you get off, you spend a couple dollars on trinkets, you have a drink and you get back on the ship and it's about being on the ship. With Windstar, it's really about the destinations that we can take you to and getting an authentic experience. For example, in Alaska, you're gonna have a whole different way of sailing in Alaska on a small ship than you would with a big ship because we really can get you up close and personal and everywhere else in the world that, that we visit. So our sailings are up close, they're authentic and they're distinctive. We have six ships, as I mentioned. We have the Windsurf, which is a 342 guest sailing yacht. Absolutely beautiful. It is our largest in the fleet. It's also our flagship. At this point, she is set to resume service on November 29th. And basically, this, this ship sails in the Caribbean and then moves to the Mediterranean. So she does a lot of the um, sailings in Italy and Greece and the Mediterranean areas. And then our two smaller ships, which are the Wind Spirit and the Wind Star, those ships are both 148 passengers. The Wind Spirit is year round in the South Pacific, spending most of her time in Tahiti. However, she does do some Tahiti and Fiji um, sailings as well. And then we have the Wind Star, and she pretty much does Costa Rica and then moves and sails over in the Mediterranean as well. This is the ship that we do most of our uh, Greek Isle sailings with because with a small ship like this, we really can get into a lot smaller ports in the Greek Isles. And then we have our three Star Plus class yachts. We were in an actual lucky position this year when everything happened with the, with the sailing stopping. And that is because these three ships were already scheduled to be in the dockyard for renovation. We actually have the Starbreeze who is now finished and she's ready to sail, but these ships went through a $250 million renovation where they basically were cut in half, expanded, and then gutted, and everything was redone on, in, on board these ships. We did things like we expanded the deck area, we added new swimming pools, we have new spas and workout facilities. This is the standard cabin on board these ships. So all the cabins start at 277 square feet and they go up from there. They all have ocean views. This particular one has a French balcony, but if it did not have the French balcony that you see there, it would be a wall to wall window instead. So they're very spacious. All of the bathrooms were also redone and you can see they also were very spacious with double sinks, big walk-in showers, um, nice and spacious even for your toilet area. So just a very um, on cruise like type of a bathroom. Then we also added new restaurants. So on board our ships, we have our main dining room. And just to mention, we are the official cruise line of the James Beard Foundation. So food and beverage is extremely important on board our ships. But we on board our ships in the restaurant, we do source our food and beverage locally and we do cook to order. We also have a steakhouse restaurant called Candles, which is on deck under the stars or under the sails, which is a wonderful feature that we offer. And then we added new restaurants on board these three ships. We have Quadro 44, which is a Spanish tapas restaurant. And this is in partnership with Chef Anthony Sasso, who is a 13 year veteran um, Michelin chef. So he's very well known. These will be the first restaurants that are under his name. And this is just a quick peek. This is actually a rendering of what the um, restaurant will look like, but it is small with a big wine bar. Around the corner is an open kitchen as well, and there'll be a chef's table there. And then the second new restaurant that we are adding on board is the Star Grill. And this is by Stephen Reichlin. He is a um, world-renowned grill master, and he's written cookbooks. He does a lot of training, but he will be opening restaurants under his name, first restaurants under his name as well. And it will be a smokehouse rotisserie on deck, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But one of the unique things about this restaurant is he will be bringing the local cultural dishes on board. So for example, um, when we're in Asia, there'll be an Asian flair here. When we're in places like Alaska, we might have things like smoked salmon, rotisserie reindeer, rotisserie elk, but things that are natural to those areas. Another great feature on board our ships is we have a water sports platform. Because we are small, we go up into harbors and these beautiful places, and this is available on both our sailing yachts and the Star 
plus class yacht that you see here. But this is all complimentary where we have things like water skiing, the sailboards, we have um, paddle boards and kayaks. It's different on every ship, but in general, that's what it is. However, most guests just like to do this, where we put all of our water toys and floaties out in the water and you just get to enjoy these beautiful surroundings that we're in. And you really are having this absolutely gorgeous experience. Imagine this as you're jumping into the Tahitian waters or the Mediterranean. I mean, just absolutely wonderful way to, to explore um, the, the oceans in this way. And then there's gonna be a lot of questions when sailing resumes about what are you gonna to do to keep me safe? And I think um, I'm very proud of my company because we, this is very important to us. We have one owner, his name is Phil Anschultz, and he actually has um, put us in partnership with the University of Colorado, which there's a medical center under his name there. Um, but we are now in partnership with them. And I believe that we are going above and beyond and have an absolutely fabulous um, program that I believe is going to be there keeping us safe. Of course, we follow the CDC and the CLIA guidelines. We will follow all the pre-boarding requisitions of the areas that we travel, as well as what we feel will keep our guests and our crew safe. On board, we have added two new things that I believe are state of the art. One is our new UVC lighting, which I will show you in a second. And then we also have electrostatic sprayers, which will be sanitizing spaces. And then we're also expanding this into our shore excursions, where we already had small shore excursions. Most of our excursions are 20 guests or less, but we will make, be making sure that we're spacing and socially distancing there as well. However, this is the new, because I mentioned our ships were already in port for renovation, these, our ships will all come out with this new hospital grade air filtration system. And I'm no engineer, so I'll explain it the best that I can. But basically it's like this, fresh air comes from the outside in, it will then go through a damper and always goes through a filter. And then at that point, usually comes back onto ships as the air. We will be upgrading our filters to HEPA filters, but then we have also added, after it goes through the HEPA filter, it will go through a heating coil and then a cooling coil, and then it will go through ultraviolet disinfection before going back out through a humidifier and a demister, and then will become the air supply. This will be in all the public guest rooms, it will, I mean, all the public spaces as well as in all the private guest rooms. So you will have a 99.9% .9 germ-free experience on a ship. So I'm very proud of that. I think that that's something that, you know, shows that we really care about our guests and our guest experience on board. And then um, we actually just received our new 2021-2022 embarkation map. But you can see we're all over the world. We do go to a lot of places. In 2021 and 2022, we are gonna be focusing on less, usually with Windstar, we introduce about 300 new ports every year and we don't repeat the same sailing very often. For the safety of our guests, we will be repeating a lot of our same sailings going into 2021 and 2022 in the event that there is something that we need to quickly react to, we wanna make sure that we're in ports that are used to seeing us. However, we're still gonna be in um, Tahiti year round. We also will be continuing with our expedition cruising in Alaska, which is a really great way to see Alaska. We have added a, um, which we didn't have earlier this year, but we have added a fall foliage sailing, which will be New York to Montreal or vice versa. We will continue with our Caribbean sailings, and then of course, spending a lot of time in the places that we're known best for, which is Italy and Greece. We will have a couple sailings in Fiji and New Caledonia as well, in Bali, but that's, um, I believe that there'll be two sailings of that in 2021. So at this point, I like to really share what my favorite sailings and what the top Windstar sailings are. We have so many. Um, I urge you to take a look at our virtual brochure that we have available now online. But we really have a lot of one. This is one of our more popular sailings. It's generally in the fall. It's called the Yachtsman Harbors of the Rivieras. It's popular because we go to the big three, Italy, France, and Spain. But we do, and I know there's a lot of cruise lines out there doing the same exact um, three, three big ones. But what's different with Windstar is it is on a sailing yacht generally. There are a couple sailings that are on our all suite. 
um, Star Plus class as well. But we actually are sailing through these areas, but we're able to anchor and we usually port where the yachts do. So you're getting a whole different experience than you would with a big ship where you're going into a big port, you're going into, you know, immediately into a big city. That's not necessarily the way that we're going. We, we still have access to the big city, but we're going into the smaller ports around. This is our number one Spanish um, itinerary. It actually was on the Condé Nast Traveler list. It is Barcelona to Lisbon, but we do go to, you know, Magdala, we go to Seville, we go to a lot of these cute little unique areas around that make Spain so popular and what people go there to see. And then this one is my personal favorite. This is actually my daughter and I, we traveled there a couple years ago, but it is also Windstar's number one seller. It is called Treasures of the Greek Isles. It is Athens to Athens. And one of the reasons that it is so popular, we do go to Mykonos, we go to Santorini. When we're in Santorini, we're generally there from seven in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, but we also go to Kusadasi. And you heard earlier about our special event that we have in Ephesus. So what it is included in the price of the sailing, one of our evening events is we take all of our guests to Ephesus after hours where only Windstar guests are there where we serve a five course white glove dinner in the Library of Celsius with a three piece orchestra playing in the background. It is absolutely spectacular. And if you can just imagine, I mean, first of all, it's hard to imagine the picture that you see here that those are actually ruins. But if you can imagine as the sun is going down and the lights of Ephesus are going up, being able to be there, right there in, in the middle of history, it is, it is a highlight of this particular sailing. We also in 2022 will begin going to Istanbul as well. So you can see that we'll have a couple that will still include this Ephesus here, but that will have a um, Turkey itinerary. I think those are 11 night sailings if I'm correct, but just a little bit different. But these here are seven night sailings and it is as I say, Athens to Athens. This happens to be my husband's favorite itinerary. It's classic Italy Dalmatian coast and that goes Rome to Venice or Venice to Rome. We go to Couture, we go to Dubrovnik. My, very, my suggestion with this is if you have the opportunity, you would wanna do Venice to Rome. And the reason for that is, is Windstar, this is on the Windsurf, so the flagship, but we are still small enough that we're sailing up through the back of the canal. And if you can imagine starting your voyage, sailing on a, on a big beautiful sailing yacht everybody's watching from the shores and one by one those sails are unfurling as you're sailing up the back of the canal looking at that beautiful history again to 1948 conquest of paradise it is just breathtaking i can't even tell you how what a fabulous way to to, to start your sailing and then when we're in dubrovnik we actually anchor in dubrovnik we have the water sports platform down and it's a great place to swim and everything but one of the things that makes us different about Dubrovnik, if you've been to Dubrovnik on a big ship before, you know, generally you go to a port that's about 30 minutes away and you're transported in by bus or however it is that you're gonna come in to the walled city. And it's like I say, it's about a 30 minute drive. With Windstar, we actually anchor right in front of the walled city and you walk in like the soldiers did. It is just, a, again, a very beautiful way to see some of these gorgeous places that we go. And in Montenegro, we're small enough that we sail down the fjord and we anchor in Couture. But one of the things that I thought was spectacular about this is on the way home, we actually pal, uh, pass Mount Sorienta, which is an active volcano. It isn't always active, but when we were there, and I talked to a lot of other people, same story, but the volcano was actually erupting. And our ship stopped for four, about 45 minutes to watch it. Everybody went up on deck. We actually were able to take photos with our cameras. Now they're not beautiful photos that I'd hang up from in my house, but you're close enough that you can actually get shots with your cell phone. So it's just a really cool way to see that area. One that I would like to go on, um, it's always sold out, so I have never had the chance to be able to do it, but we do an Around Iceland, which is a seven day Reykjavik to Reykjavik. But this is a great way to see Iceland as well. Every day you wake up in a different fishing village. And I have talked to guests that have been on this and they just talk about how spectacular it was. The first year that we did it, I had a group, um, I think they had like nine cabins on board. And on board after their sailing, three of those cabins rebooked for the very next year, the exact same sailing, because it's that spectacular. 
And then one that I like to call out as well is our Norwegian Splendors. It's Edinburgh to Edinburgh. And I'm not even going to begin to pronounce the areas that we stop in in between here. But um, one, we do a lot of scenic cruising. Because we are small, again, it's a lot of sailing through the fjords. So right from the deck, you're able to see the beauty of Norway. And it is one of our more popular ones, too. I think we've been doing Norway now for about two years. I think this would have been our third season in Norway. And it does very well. It's a, it's a really, really nice sailing. And then we are also in the Caribbean. Um, so we move most of our ships from the Mediterranean, Mediterranean at the end of November, and we spend our season in the Caribbean with most of our ships um, through usually April. First week of April is when we start moving back to the Mediterranean again. But what I think is great that I like to call out about our Caribbean is it is a very different, we have a lot of different itineraries, but it's a different itinerary than if you've been on the big ships. We go places like Falmouth Harbor, Sofers Hole, Joost Van Dyke, just those small little places that when you're on a big ship and you look across at what looks like these little deserted islands, well, that's where Windstar is actually anchoring. So just a really great way to see the Caribbean more authentic. And then we do Costa Rica, Panama Canal, the adventures in Panama and Costa Rica were our past president's very favorite sailing. For the four years that he was with us, he always did a president sailing there because he loved it so much. Um, but you really get a great experience in Costa Rica. We also do a full transit. When we do the Panama Canal, we do a full transit of the Panama Canal. So this is, uh, if you've been to Costa Rica before, you spend a lot of time traveling from one site to the next and the roads aren't always that great. With Windstar, we're traveling while you're sleeping. You know, you're not having to worry about bad roads. I mean, yes, we do have to travel, you know, a little bit from the port, but nothing like if you were driving around Costa Rica yourself. Just a really great way to see this area. And we are small enough that we're able to get you into most of the ports of all the big UNESCO sites. And then we are also known for our dreams at Tahiti. Right now, um, what we're finding is Tahiti is one of our top sellers with our guests. And I, I think it's because, you know, it, it, everyone feels safe because the islands are so small. But we have a unique opportunity in 2021 for Tahiti where we actually will have both our sailing yacht and our newly renovated all suite yacht. We'll be bringing the Star Breeze there for a couple months in November and December of 2021. So you're really able to experience it either way. But it is a seven day Pepiete de Pepiete. But we go places that you really wouldn't go to if you were visiting Tahiti and just going to, for example, Bora Bora or, or the main islands. We go to places like Taha. And this is actually my daughter right here with my $30 underwater camera that I use with the octopus. But literally, the, it, it is like if you like to snorkel or you, you like to even scuba dive, this is the place to go. You literally are looking down in the water and you're able to reach in and do this. That's actually the guide who pulled it out, but he, he reached down into the coral and pulled out this octopus. And then we all passed it around and we watched it swim back in the water and swim away from us. But when we were snorkeling in Taha, it was like I was in an aquarium. I have never seen so many fish, so many big, beautiful fish. I mean, I was in schools of, of um, angelfish down there. I saw eels and it was like glass. I can't even begin to explain how fabulous it was. And then we have our own private motos where we take our guests to um, for a couple different days. This particular one where you see us standing up here, this is the evening that we go for our fire dancing. One of the Windstar evenings that we do is we take all of our guests to our private moto where we have fire dancers and um, hula dancers and we have a big pig roast that evening. Of course, it's much, much more than that in typical Windstar style, but it's a really wonderful sailing. And I will tell you, Tahiti is not what I thought it was based on all the pictures that I've seen. It was so much more, so, so much more. It was probably one of the most spectacular trips I've had as well. And then we know that sailings close to home, especially in 2021, will be important to some people. And because of that, we've actually changed around some of our, our itineraries and we've added some Canada and New England sailings. So there's a few different ones to consider, but this is our most popular one that we offer. It's actually um, New York to Montreal. But you can see we still go to places like we go through the Cape Cod canals because we are small enough for that. And if you can imagine, that's when the um, lobster season is. So you're going to see all those lobster boats out there. We go to Newport, Rhode Island, Bar Harbor, Maine, up through Hall Halifax, um, Charlotte, 
And I think the later that you're able to choose, like if you go to more like that September first week of October, you're going to get a great um, view of the fall foliage. Because even if it's not fall foliage as you're starting here, as you move up to Canada, you're going to see more and more as you go. I was born and raised in Vermont, and I was actually raised in the maple business. So um, we actually had a, a maple syrup farm or a maple farm where we actually made syrup. So I know that those are the better times to go. Late September to early October is when you're going to start seeing the, the prettiest of the colors. And then Windstar, Alaska is another close to home. This is a really great way to see Alaska, even if you've been to Alaska before. We change our ship um, into a, an expedition ship. We're not just another cruise line that's sailing around in Alaska. It really is something special and it's something for all ages. You can do the helicopter rides and the dog sleds and you know everything else you see. I'm putting pictures in here of last year, I actually, was not able to go, but all of my coworkers went on board one of our ships. And this is one of them. She took her 12 year old daughter and, you know, she did it her way with the zip lining and the helicopter rides and, you know, the things you need to do to keep the younger generation entertained. And then I had another friend, um, my friend Andrea, she likes to do photography. And this is actually right from the bow of the ship that she took this. And you can see how beautiful and close that it is. But what's special about Windstar is we do our signature expeditions there. We have a crew on board that um, is actually led by Simon Hook. He's done it every year that we've had it. But our crew on board will take our guests right from the water sports platform on our expedition sailings with our Zodiacs and our kayaks. We also do hiking. But this team is on board throughout the whole voyage. So although you're going off and you're doing these close up and personal expeditions, they're there having breakfast, lunch, and dinner with you, answering questions throughout, doing lectures. It's a really great way to have an authentic experience in um, Alaska. And we go places like College Fjord, which are some of these off the beaten path places that you can't, really can't go to. This video that I'm gonna show you here was actually taken by my friend David, again from the bow of the ship, and I show it to you just so that you can see how close our ships can go. You just wouldn't get this close if you were on a So special is that we really do get you up close personal. My other friend um, was actually on the kayaks while that was all happening and she was like, Diana, she goes, I was scared for my life and the guy just said, hold on and enjoy the ride. And she said the temperature dropped about 15 degrees. She screamed bloody murder, but she said it was the most fantastic thing that she's ever, ever experienced. But we have a lot of different sailings um, in Alaska. I think three or four different itineraries that we'll be offering in 2021 but we offer seven, 10, and 11 night itineraries. The one that is our most popular is our Alaskan Splendors. This one is actually Vancouver to Anchorage. It is a 10 day sailing, but it was on the Condé Nast Traveler 2019 hot list. Well, one of the things that makes us special is, you know, the big ships might be able to get you there, but to get to some of these small little ports that we go to, it's a shore excursion. With Windstar, we actually sail up through the fjords and we anchor in the national parks. And that's why we were able to get as close to that glacier that you saw that did the calving because we really do, we're, we're mobile, we're fluid. So if we know something's gonna happen, we can move our ships to those areas and we can anchor in the area. So it's just a little bit, it's a lot of a different way to see it. But I think our expedition team on board is what really makes that sailing special. And then we do pre and post tours as well. So if you wanted to do the Danelli tour, we, we certainly can add that on to. And that is pretty much um, what I wanted to share. I wanted to open it up if anybody had any questions. And I'll come back on board. So hello. Whoops. There. I think I see a couple questions in the 
Yeah, you take a look at those questions, Dinah, and you can uh, answer those. But I wanted to say hello to everybody. Thank you, Dinah. That was an excellent presentation. Um, a couple people, we started about a minute early and some of our people joined right at three o'clock when they were supposed to. So um, I, I will, uh, if anybody wants to, I'll take a few minutes and show a couple pictures of when I was on a Windstar last year and it was an excellent uh, experience, uh, very small ship experience. Um, and while I'm queuing those up, if, do you, are you ready to answer questions? Yeah, I think I have three and I can answer them. Um, one question is, can you give me several example of Windstar ports where celebrity Holland, Holland America, Norwegian cannot go? I mean, honestly, it's almost every port that we go to. So we, mostly because we don't go into the big ports and we, we anchor, you know, we're, we're able to go to small little places. And, you know, I can't even think of off the top of my head, a name of a port right now, but that's probably why, because I can never remember the names of the ports. But even in the Caribbean, for example, going to Soper's Hold, they're not going places like that. They're not going to Montserrat. They're not able to go to Tahiti. Um, there are just so many. I couldn't even, I would say 90% of where we go, those ships cannot go. So that's that would be my answer there. And then what does Windstar do to help a customer travel from, from the United States to a Windstar ship? Airline reservations, price breaks. Um, my suggestion is you always, always, always want to use a travel advisor because your travel advisor will check both, um, they're going to check to see is Windstar offer, because we do offer air, but our air is not always the best air. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Your travel advisor can help guide you with that. Um, as far as price breaks go, well, Michael's agency actually, all agencies have the same rates. We don't have a better rate if you book direct or if you book through an agency. The difference is, however, is he sometimes has perks that he can give you that other places cannot, other agencies can't, other, um, you're not going to get it if you book us direct. So that that would be one that I would say that um, we could offer you as far as that goes. We also are, if you have sailed with us before, you're automatically a Yacht Club member and get a 5% discount on all future cruises. So we have different things like that. And then what date do we anticipate um, the resumption of our operations? Well, I wish I had a crystal ball. I mean, I can tell you the days that we plan. Um, I don't necessarily that those will be the days that will happen. Um, I think that we're probably looking at, well, we are probably looking at November at the earliest. We're still waiting on some direction from the CDC and we will know more as we go along, but we certainly want to start sailing as soon as we possibly can. Our ships are ready to go. Um, currently, our sailing yachts are all in Aruba waiting for us to deploy, so we're ready to go. We're just waiting on when it's safe for our crew and our guests. Hopefully, I answered those okay. Thank you. So, can I follow up on the dates just a second? You, you mentioned at the beginning you had the surf uh, at the end of November in the Caribbean, the spirit yeah. in Tahiti mid-October and the breeze uh, late October in the mid. So, those are firm dates, but you don't know for sure that they'll actually take place. Correct. Is that, right? it, that is correct. And my, my, my main reason with that is I don't, I mean, this is not an official Windstar word whatsoever, but the med locations that we go, I think it's going to be difficult for us to get reliable testing for our guests to pass to even be able to get off our ship. So I don't think for Americans for sure that that October date is going to be a safe date in the med. I think that um, if anything, they might use it for press and just never get off the ship and then head over to the Caribbean, but we're still waiting to hear what happens. Until there is reliable testing, I'm not sure how, how comfortable we would be sailing out. Um, let me say, every, everyone, you've been able to, it says talking permitted beside your name, so if you have a question, you just unmute yourself and please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Um, I can also promote you to a panelist so that you can turn your video on like Lou did or and, and ask questions. And um, do you have any information on the round trip uh, San Juan sailing that you guys do? The seven night on the Star Breeze? It's, uh, it's on the Star Breeze. So, well, one, it's going to be on the brand new ship. So that will be great. We do have a naturalist on board that ship that will talk, you know, it talk, he talks throughout um, 
talks about the different destinations we're going to, the UNESCO sites that we're going to be visiting. Um, he'll talk about, you know, anything that a guest wants to, but he does have set up, you know, he will have set up things as well. When you ask that, do you mean in, in terms of ports or if it's going to happen or? No, no, we that? just, just in general, I, I know there's someone on the call that's looking at that uh, particular itinerary for 2021. So I have not been on that sailing myself. However, my coworker David went on it last year. Um, seems I'm always at a conference and can't go on any anymore. But um, my coworker David was on it last year and talks about it as being one of his absolute, absolute best trips that he's ever taken. Just couldn't believe the places that we we're actually able to to go that he hadn't even dreamed of. So I could get more information from him and I'll be happy to forward that along. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tr see about sharing some pictures. Let's see, can everyone see the port of Kusadasi on their screen? Do you see yes. that? Okay. Yes. And I'm going to try to cycle through. Is the picture change for you? Uh, uh, what's happened is your uh, files are like on top of it and your travel yeah. invest investment yeah. advisors is over the top of it. Ah, okay. For me too, yeah. Okay, hang on one second. See, you know, after seven months of Zoom, you'd think I could operate it. Now you're back to looking at you at your desk. Okay, I think this will work better. Okay, how about now? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Okay, and does this picture just change? Yes. Excellent. So this was on the Windstar. That, uh, the name of the ship is also Windstar, just a 140-passenger ship. And this is a uh, Kusadasi, which is very close to Ephesus. Um, this is Ephesus at sunrise. And if you want to see all the pictures, I'll be glad to share a link. And in fact, I put a link in the chat that you can click on and it opens all the pictures. This is in the middle of the journey. We had been in Ephesus earlier in the day. I think it was about 120 degrees or something, um, but it was, obviously amazing, but it was also full of people. But then Windstar brought us back to Ephesus for sunset and uh, dinner. And what was just an amazing, amazing experience uh, that they have access to this place after they close. And so we had it to ourselves, just 140 of us and the crew um, set up here. And then they had a, um, a trio playing uh, classical music and they had a speaker uh, come talk about Ephesus and uh, Turkey and it was such an incredible experience. I just wanted to share this with you. Are the pictures continuing to change? Yes. Yeah. Great, great. These are some of the tables in our group. Um, I had, I escorted a group. We were, uh, I think 24 of us, something like that. Go and ahead. if you've been to Ephesus before, there's usually, you know, you're usually there during the day and there's thousands of people. You would never have this much space to yourself there. No. Um, but like I said, and then we went on to the Greek owls. And anybody that wants us, I will send an email of the entire shared album. I'm not going to tie up all day on it. But um, I can personally tell you that this is an excellent experience. It's not the same as being on huge cruise ships. I'm not putting down huge cruise ships. They have their place, but for these types of experiences, this is a, is a wonderful way to do it. Does anyone have any further questions for Diana while we're on the call? And uh, if so, please unmute yourself and, and ask. If you think of something as soon as we end, which happens a lot, just shoot me an email uh, or give me a call. I'm glad to help with that. And um, I want to thank you guys for being here. So, and I, yeah, and I actually want to thank uh, Diana so much for taking her time today to tell us all about Windstar. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for taking your time to listen as well. I hope to see you sailing soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.